Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Carolyn and her clothes. So today I have the long awaited for you Q&A. Um, this is actually my second time filming it. For whatever reason, the first video I did was 28 minutes long and just would not upload to YouTube. So here I am saying again, <laughs> <laughs> what I said to you before. So I tried to list these in the order of like the more, most popular questions that I've gotten. The first one is my job. So I get this question a lot, especially with my family and friends. And when I try to explain to them what I do, their eyes kind of glaze over. So I do sales analytics. Um, what does that mean? It means I measure sales people and just overall sales performance. Um, I do some predictive modeling to determine what our future sales will be. Um, I work really closely with our partners in India to our technology partners to enhance our data warehouse with other in pieces of information so we can better forecast model um, just, just different pivots and types of reports that we do if we have the information available. So I work with them providing them the business rules, where to get the information, how we want it to look, etc. So yeah, that's why I'm on at 8 a.m. every morning. I have a very small window where I can speak to them before they go home for the day. So next thing was the question related to that is, do I plan to go to YouTube full time? And my answer to that is no. So I have a regular salary job with health benefits, vacation time, and a bonus. So there is no way YouTube would ever meet that. Even, even if I got like, you know, 100,000 subscribers, I, I mean, I don't have any kind of, you know, health insurance, et cetera, that, that's an extra cost. So. As of now, no, I don't plan on going to YouTube full time. Um, when I retire, certainly that would be a consideration to keep myself busy. Um, now it's just kind of for fun. Um, my when I pandemic hit, my daughter was older. Found I had a lot more time on my hands, and I decided uh, I spoke to Kayla about it. Kayla was the one that encouraged me. She goes, "Do it. It's so much fun. And, you know, you get to see yourself on the video and see what you look like." And, and I do have to say, I've been able to talk a lot easier to you guys now. I've learned to, I guess, speak in front of a camera, and you know, and it's actually kind of helped me in my job when I do uh, training and whatnot that I'm able to speak to people without getting so nervous because now I am on a camera all the time. But the answer is no, at this point in my life, I am not planning to go to YouTube full time. <laughs> the next question that always seems to be a popular one are my peppers, all right? Why do I make peppers? Well, when I first saw my nutritionist, um, I had asked them, they came to my gym, they're like a third party, they just happened to be doing the rounds at different gyms. They came to my gym and they went through their spiel explaining to about macronutrients and I raised my hands and I said, will you be willing to work with a picky eater? So she said, sure, come on in, you know, <laughs> it's a free consultation. So she paired me with a nutritionist that had a lot of food allergies, which I guess is a good match because even though I don't have any food allergies, I have limitations in what I, I am willing to eat. I am really picky. The only fruit I will eat is an apple and I don't even enjoy that. I'll eat it, but I'm just like, oh boy, an apple, you know? So, um, Vegetables are also pretty limited. So when I went to see her, we literally went through what I will eat and what I don't eat. And she went through the list, broccoli, asparagus, spinach, green beans. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. Cauliflower, nope, yeah. <laughs> Carrots, I said, only raw. <laughs> so, you know, she basically went through every fruit, every vegetable. And when I got to peppers, I said, yeah, I like peppers. She's like, good, eat those. <laughs> But she never expected me to eat as many as I do. It was just very, there's very little that I would put in my mouth that wasn't cookies, candy, you know, chips, etc. You know, I would just, I would like basically junk, junk food um, and nothing nutritious. And she was just trying to find something that was nutritious for me that I was willing to eat. And that's how I got stuck on the peppers. And yeah, I buy um, six bags, there's six in each bag, so 36 peppers each week. And I spend probably about two hours on my weekend prepping them and cooking them. So yeah, that's where the peppers come from. If my, there's no like regulations and I have to eat peppers. If, if I said, you know, I, if my nutritionist would say, great, finally you're trying something else other than peppers. <laughs> you know, but I like them. So that's what I continue to eat. The vacation, I could do a whole video on my vacation of, of, of self. Um, 
So we did a bus tour with a company called Cosmos. I've never done a bus tour before. It was my first time. And I did do research. And the reason why we chose this is that we didn't want to rent a car and do it ourselves. Because it's to us, it's kind of like a hassle. You know, it, to us, driving and getting lost and not knowing where you're going, it, it's stressful. And that's not something we wanted to, either one of us really wanted to do vacation. And I was very interested in the Pacific Northwest, primarily Washington and Oregon, Seattle and Portland. And theoretically, I also wanted to do um, Vancouver, but we couldn't even find a tour that included that. So we started with um, one place, but they were ended up being, they just gave you train tickets and it wasn't a tour. And I said, well, that's kind of like doing everything on our own and getting stressed out. So then we ended up doing this bus tour. Now I read the reviews online um, and they seemed to get all good reviews. So the company was called Cosmos and you know, everything seemed fine. We, we uh, it was, I'm gonna tell you, it was a pricey vacation. It was $6,500, it didn't include food and it didn't include air. So it to me is a, a lot of money, a lot of money. Um, we usually don't go on expensive vacations like this. But we want, it was something that I had on my bucket list for a while to actually see. And I have to say, that part of the trip met to its expectations. I saw great sights there. However, the touring company um, was not that great. So the first day we get there, we meet our tour guide. There's no meet or greet or anything like that. He was just like, I'm here to answer any questions. I said, well, since we're leaving so early in the morning, I said, where do you recommend we go for breakfast? He goes, well, I don't know. He goes, ask the front the hotel front desk. So right there, that was kind of off-putting. Like, you're the tour guide. Shouldn't you know the area? You know, that. so I was kind of confused by that. Um, we then go on the bus. The first stop and the next day, the first stop was the Space Needle. And that was just a two-minute get out, take a picture, get back on the bus. All right. So that, again, was a little bit disappointing. I thought we were actually... I knew we weren't going to go up in the Space Needle, but I thought it would be a little bit more than that. <laughs> Then um, the next place was Pike's Market, right? They gave us an hour or maybe 90 minutes to walk around there, um, which if you've ever been there, you know is not enough time, and then back on the bus. <clears throat> now, the one thing I missed is that he suggested, apparently, that we get something at Pike's Market to eat because we were going Mount Rainier, it was limited for food, and he wasn't kidding. <laughs> so now we didn't have a really great breakfast. And, you know, we just had some snacks just because we wanted to try some snacks at Pike's Market. And then we get to Mount Rainier. We had to wait in line. This is another thing that kind of blew my mind. Wait in line an hour just to get into the park. The bus didn't have any kind of privilege to get in line first. So, you know, again, we were sitting an hour waiting to go through the gates to get into the park, which to me is insanity. Um, we then get into the park, um, and because of the delay, and we also got a little lost on the way there, we now, our time, Mount Rainier was cut short. So when we got this trip, we looked at the itinerary, and it was a, pretty much a different hotel room each night. You were limited on luggage, and you were responsible for your own luggage. And the places were very outdoorsy. So Mount Rainier and, and the dunes. And we were originally going to go on a dune buggy ride, but that was canceled the last minute. And they only refunded us $15 for it. Um, we were supposed to, um, <clears throat> what else were we supposed to do? Oh, um, a Crater Lake, absolutely breathtaking. So, you know, we thought it was going to be an act of a trip. And I, I don't mean to insult anyone on there, but the average age on this trip and i'm talking average age was about 75 years old there was one young man 25 years old who read the itinerary and thought the same of us that it was an active trip where you're going to be going hiking and going to a different hotel every day and etc cetera, etc cetera. whereas most of the people well, i would say most there were some were active and some of them couldn't even get off the bus so <laughs> Some people stayed on the bus the entire time and never actually got off to see these places. Whenever we got off to a place to actually go visit and explore, we were only given an hour, hour and a half tops. So you really can't do much hiking or walking around and exploring in that time. Um, anytime they dropped us off to a town for lunch, it was never a planned place or planned visit. The town had no clue a busload of people were coming. They were inundated with us. 
we were literally basically just able to get like a sandwich to go. I'm not even joking. This one place we were at, we did a sandwich and we ate the sandwich and then we basically got back on the bus and left. We couldn't explore the town at all because it was that, you know, crowded. They had like no plans. It wasn't like they had an arranged place for us to eat, nothing. And again, all food was on our own. When it came to the end of each day, not just one day, but each day, the driver says, well, this is the end of our tour and tours ended at five or six o'clock at night. He goes, we do have time for a Walmart run. So we're gonna stop off at Walmart for anybody who wants to go for Walmart for dinner. I'm like, everyone is like, Walmart, Walmart for dinner? Who wants to eat Walmart for dinner? So we did not eat Walmart for dinner, but many people on the bus ate Walmart for dinner, prepared sandwiches or whatever they could find, cheese and crackers, and that's what they ate in their hotel room for dinner. And you know, no plates, no utensils, no nothing. Um, and yeah, that wasn't our idea of a trip. Fortunately, we are able, and because we're healthy and active, we are able to walk to places to eat but they are hotels and that's another bone I have to pick. Apparently this is a budget tour and what makes them budget is that they're not close to anything. Um, the hotels are fine. There was nothing to complain about the hotels. They were new and they were clean. Um, they were like, you know, Marriott Courtyards, Holiday Inn. So there's no, no issues with the hotels. Um, but we really had an issue with, you know, eating Walmart for dinner. and. It was my assumption because we got an app, right? And our app would say, this is the town you're gonna to be in and here are all the restaurants. We were under the impression the, the restaurants would be close or the bus would take us to the place where the restaurants were and then pick us up when we were done. I didn't expect them to pay. I didn't expect it to be part of the tour, but I did expect transportation to food. And apparently that was an, you know, an assumption I made that was not accurate. Um, so that was an issue. Um, let's see the one night that really upset me is we were, you know, in Mount Rainier and then we were in an isolated desert town the next night. And then the, the, the next day we were in Bend and it said, welcome to Bend, Oregon. All right. Um, home of 27 breweries tonight. You're on your own. However, suggest that you go to downtown and explore one of 27 breweries or explore on, on your own, which I again thought that the bus would take us to Bend, but we weren't in Bend. Even though it said, welcome to Bend, we were six miles away from all that. So it's like, basically you're on your own to take an Uber to get to Bend. Or unfortunately, again, because we're healthy and can, we were able to find a place, again, asking the hotel front desk, because our tour guide had absolutely no clue um, where to get something to eat. Most nights, the hotels, the only place to eat, if we were lucky, was the place in the hotel. Um, one hotel we were in had a very, very small hole in the wall pub where we walked to, but most people ended up just eating the free soup in the hotel lobby and then going to bed. I mean, that, that's pretty much it. When we were in Bend, Oregon, they gave us two hours to walk around and we said, and then he said, well, we'll come back at night for dinner run. And I said, well, can we stay here and not go back to the hotel? Because the hotel had nothing. The hotel was nothing there. But it, he's like, well, wow, yeah, you want to stay? I'm like, well, yeah, there's 27 breweries. There's shops and then we want to walk around and explore. Two hours isn't enough here. So he said, that's up to you. That's fine. So that's great. So that was the only town I felt I got my money's worth out of because I was able to stay from 12 in the afternoon to about seven or eight o'clock at night. Whereas the other places you were there for an hour and or 90 minutes and get them back on the bus and then drive around. So one of the people asked us, we're curious why we had to wait three weeks is because we had a lot of issues and complaints. And one of them too, was that the bus was constantly lost. Like now we really liked the bus driver a lot. He was a nice guy, but it was clear. And the driver, the tour guy admitted it that this trip had almost been canceled because the bus company, they couldn't find a bus that they usually use. They didn't have a usual driver. They went with a new bus company. They went with a new bus driver, never did this tour in his life. <laughs> and we were on a bus with no Wi-Fi. And you're like, yeah, well, Carolyn, get over it. Why don't you have Wi-Fi? Well, it wasn't just that we didn't have Wi-Fi. We also didn't have cellular service for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> like maybe three, four, five hours on a bus 
with no service and they didn't know where they were going. They were using old school maps to try and find where they were trying to go to. We got lost like you wouldn't believe. And again, that cut our time short in a lot of the destinations. So we reached out to um, Cosmos and we listed our complaints. We explained exactly it. I'm like, Walmart for dinner is not acceptable. They had it, and then we told him about Bend and he said, welcome to Bend. And then he <laughs> don't bring us to Bend. <laughs> And then we had an issue with the time being short. So, you know, when we we did it in an email uh, on their survey, and we uh, you're online on their survey, plus we called and we spoke to someone. And originally the woman seemed very sympathetic and shocked that we were off for Walmart for dinner. <laughs> so then we end up um, getting a response that they're going to refund us $500. Not even, it was like 464 and change. Where they came up with that amount, I don't know. In my mind, that isn't enough. But they do admit that the, there was an issue with the, the bus and that the driver didn't know where he was going. And it's true, the driver got lost. And that was the amount they decided to refund us. I'm not satisfied with that. Th this was not a $6,000 vacation. I spent most of my time on a bus. <laughs> Um, and it was, I thought it was going to be an, an active vacation. And we were, uh, other than this one 25 year old kid who went on board, we were the youngest people there. Uh, and again, most people were 75 and older, some well into their eighties on this trip. And you know, the, the, honestly, like some of them, I said, could not get off the bus. They were just too weak and frail to do that. And they just basically sat on the bus and drove around the bus for the entire trip. So like I said, fortunately for us, we, we were adventurous enough as the front desk, to, you know, if we had to walk about a mile to eat, we walked about a mile to eat. That's not a big deal for us, but for them it was, and they got Walmart for dinner or soup from the hotel. And yeah, that was our vacation. Now that said that the destinations are fabulous. Put Crater Lake on your bucket list. Bend was an adorable town. Mount Rainier was breathtaking. The dunes in Oregon, unreal soft powdery sand. Um, the, the beaches were like a mile deep, um, just incredible. So I'm not unhappy that I went on this trip. I just would never ever use this core company again. And I probably won't be a, doing a tour on a bus until I'm in my seventies. <laughs> Cause that seems to be the average age. Alrighty, so next up is a piano. Everyone always wants to know about that piano. No, I don't play. I don't have a musical talent at all. It's my daughter and my neighbor. Um, they were moving and knew that she had an interest in it and they gave it to us for free because they had to get rid of it. And she used to play when she was in high school. Now that she's in college, she really doesn't play. Where did I meet my husband? Match.com. And we've been married 22 years. Next one, weight loss photos. So I'm going to link to a video um, that I had done a while back that shows whatever photos I was able to find, what it looked like before and after. But I didn't have, I don't have many because I never took many photos when I was heavy because I was ashamed of my weight. And the ones that I did, I always kind of strategically placed my daughter in front of me to block me. But I'll link a, um, that video so you can actually see. Um, other than my bunny, do I have any pets? The answer is no. Um, and I don't plan on getting it anymore because I start really want to start traveling. Um, and a pet is kind of pricey and it, it's very pricey when you want to go away. It costs us every time we get a bunny sitter, it costs us $50 a day. That, that, that's a lot. <laughs> All right, next question is, my husband get angry about all the shopping? Yes, yes, he does get angry. It's a, a thing that we have, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, it doesn't change our, in, in our lifestyle any. Um, you know, it, we're not in debt. Um, I live very modestly otherwise. I don't have a fancy car. I don't go to movies. I don't go to shows. We have a very small family, so it's not like we're giving gifts to people or going to weddings or anything like that. Um, I really don't leave the house that often. So the clothes are what is my hobby and gives me joy. Uh, that said, we, like I said, we want to start traveling. Um, and obviously I do have, do not have infinite resources. So something's going to have to give, I'm going to have to scale down my shopping so we can start putting money towards vacations instead. Next question. Do I read? Yes, I do read, but sporadically. Um, that goes into what genre is it? 
I typically like nonfiction. I read a lot about cults and cult survivor stories and they're heavy books. They're, they're, they're very heavy books. So often I'll read one and then I can't read for a while because it's disturbing to me or I'll read part of one and it, it sits there on my nightstand and I can't pick it up again. And that's kind of where I am now. Um, thank you whoever mentioned asked me this question because I remembered I needed a book for my cruise so I just purchased one um, and it ended up I purchased uh, Paris Hilton's book and the reason why I chose that book is because I know that she was sent to Utah to a youth correctional facility as a teenager um, um, and, and that kind of like interests me in that respect but I'm hoping because it's Paris Hilton that it's not so upset and so disturbing as some of the ones that I've been reading, but yet keeps me interested enough. All right, next one. What are my favorite tops, pants, and dress? And I'll be honest with you, I don't have one. But I can say, like for tops, I prefer to buy my tops at Loft, Ever Eve, um, or like from a department store and sanctuary is probably my best for tops i like sweaters because i'm working from home they're comfortable i just like the knits they're they're, they're more comfortable than a, a formal blouse and i prefer mostly cotton all right they don't have to be 100 percent cotton but i do so you know i usually talk about my favorite stores being white house black market every eve and and loft and i have to say White House Black Market is not the place that I buy my tops. I'm not happy with the quality of their sweaters. They use a lot of polyester. They don't wash and wear as well, in my opinion. So yeah, I, I you know, tops, I would have to say Sanctuary, um, Ever Eve, etc. And I try and lean towards cotton or just a nicer type of blend. Um, Pants, uh, again, I don't have favorite pants, but I, that I do like White House Black Market typically for my pants. I also like Ever Eve for my pants and to a certain extent, Loft for my pants um, and Big Time Sanctuary. And I also like Liverpool and Cut too. And dress, well, it depends on the type of dress that I need, um, but typically White House Black Market, if I want a dress, that's typically where I get a dress or if I, you know, it depends on the type of dress too. Like a light buy a lot of those Michael Starr's dresses. I probably have like three or four of those. So yeah, I don't really have like a favorite particular dress, but I have to say I stick to certain name brands because that's what I like and what I can afford. I'm kind of like, you know, a hundred dollars per item is my max that I'll spend pretty much. All right, the last one by Janine. How did I get back into a routine after hurting my back? And this one, all right, so what happened was I purposely, when I hurt my back, I never went out of my routine. I still went to the gym. Even if I could only walk like at a two, you know, which was barely walking, that's what I did. Because I needed to keep into that routine of getting up and going to the gym. And plus, moving just helped me. And then, you know, what I did is as the time progressed, if I felt I was getting a little better, every day I'd be in the lobby thinking about, all right, what can my back tolerate? What do I think I can do today? So like there were some days I can really slowly jog and then, and then next I, you know, maybe I can run a little bit and then go back to a jog. And it just really depended on how my back felt. And I basically was able to use the treadmill before I was able to lift anything on the floor because that required more movement from my back where when I was on the treadmill running, I can keep it at a pace that was controllable and I didn't jostle my back so much. So the running came first and then once that got better and my back felt strong enough, that's when I went back to the weight training. So it took probably six, seven, maybe eight weeks, but by eight weeks, I was pretty much back to what I was before. If you're interested, um, I run, I can run probably for 50 minutes at like a five, seven, but what our gym does is they have a base pace. My base is five, five. My push is six, which it depends on how long my push is. If it's like 90, 90 seconds or less, I can do six, five. Am I all out, depending on the day, anywhere from a six five to an eight, depending on how I'm feeling. So, you know, if anyone runs and wants to understand that. Um, so when I say I can run 5.7 for 
50 minutes, running at a six is a 10 minute mile. So I'm not quite at a 10 minute mile. I'm definitely over a 10 minute mile. And yeah, that's my Q&A. If I missed anything, put it in the comments below and I'll follow up with another Q&A. Thank you again for returning subscribers. I appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed yet, what's holding you back? Click that notification bell, get notified of future videos from me and give me that thumbs up. Take care, till next time.